A kiss is a sign of intimate connection. In Jesus' day, it was a common greeting, but still it was a sign of deep respect and brotherly love. One of the hardest things about betrayal is that it often comes from those who are closest to us. Jesus knew what it was to be betrayed and let down by those closest to him. Mark 14, the passage we were looking at at the weekend, speaks of the moment we know well. Now the betrayer had given them a sign saying, the one I will kiss is the man, seize him and lead him away under guard. And when he came, he went up to him at once and said, Rabbi, and he kissed him. One of the paraphrases of the Bible puts the next bit wonderfully. Jesus says, friend, why this charade? I said this is the famous moment of betrayal. Of course, when we step back, we realize that betrayal is kind of all over this passage, and it's not just with Judas. Isn't Peter, in a very obvious way, untrue to Christ when he denies him afterwards? And what about the rest of the disciples? Well, the end of the passage, verse 50, tells us they got up and ran away. They fled. The difference between Judas and the disciples is that those other disciples held out for Jesus on the other side. And Jesus, after his resurrection, came back to them. He welcomed them and he forgave them. And amazingly, they ended up the bedrock of his early church. In the spirit of being still this Lent, I thought it'd be good for us to take some time to dwell and to ponder these moments in Jesus' life. The absolute best thing that you can do is go straight to the link below in the description here and download the resources for Lent and take some time with all the media and all the audio visual stuff there to really dwell on this. Second best, you can listen to the questions that I'm gonna be asking, perhaps pause in between to just give yourself a moment for thought. First question, think of a time when you've been hurt by someone close to you. Have you experienced healing in that relationship? If you have, praise God, keep working at it. If you haven't, are you able to bring that relationship to the Lord in prayer? Look to Jesus as the one who encourages us to pray even for those who hurt us. A heavy sigh is good enough. It's a good place to start. Jesus knows. But as you continue to pray, do be looking out for yourself as the answer to your own prayers. Jesus is the spring of forgiveness and often our prayers find their answers in our own hearts. A few more notices as we close. Number one, Don't miss those excellent resources I mentioned earlier. We had a great time thinking about them last week. You'll find them both in the email that you've been sent here, in the description of this video, and also on our website to help us be still. Secondly, if you're involved in any of our small groups or actually in any way in discipling others, do join us this evening at 8 p.m. for our small group leader training in our second session, thinking how we can walk alongside people and encourage them in their faith. And thirdly, this Friday, we've got our second men's curry night on Zoom happening at 8 p.m. That begins. Do sign up uh, or contact Ben at emmanuelcroydendog.uk for more information on that. Thank you for being with us.